everyone you're welcome back to my channel my name is Sinka in today's class we're going to be making this beautiful top so for this tutorial I use just three yards of uh, organza fabric so let's get started so first I'll, I'm going to be folding my fabric into four then I'm going to draft the blouse first so I'll rule my guideline Note, we are cutting both the front and the back together for this pattern. Then from the guideline, I will measure down my vertical measurement. First, I will measure down the length of my ham O. My ham O, I'm making my ham O to be 8 inches. Then my waist length. And then the length of my blouse. I used 8 inches for the length of my ham O because it's going to be a sleeveless dress. Alright, so after that, you extend the lines. Then on your guideline, you're going to input your shoulder measurements divided by 2. Then you still put the same measurements on the chest line, that is your arm O line. Then you roll it into a straight line. I believe we all know how to do this by now. Then after that, I'll come to the tip of the shoulder. I'll drop the shoulder by 1 inch. Then starting from the folded edge, I will measure 3 inches inward. Then I'll connect these two points together so that I can get my shoulder slope. Then after that, you can put your desired neck width and neck depth. But for this tutorial, I'm using 3.2 for my neck width. And then for the back neckline, I'm using 1 inch. While for the front neckline, I'm using 3.2. For the neck depth, so don't forget the width of the neckline is equal. I use 3.2, it's only the depth that is different. The back neck depth is one, while the one for the front is 3.2. So while cutting it out, you first cut on the back neckline before reshaping the front neckline. Alright, so because it's a sleeveless dress, at the tip of the shoulder, I'll come in by one inch. Then I'll place my French cuff, touching this one inch and also touching the uh, chest line. I'll get my arm or cuff. Then the next thing now is to input my circumference measurement. So on my chest line, I'm going to input my bust measurements divided by 4 plus 1 inch seam allowance. And on the waist line, I'm going to input my waist circumference measurements divided by 4 plus 1 inch ease and then 1 inch seam allowance. You have, to, you have to add ease to the waistline. If not, you won't be able to wear the top. It will be so tight. All right, because there's no zipper at the back. So at the length of your blouse, you're going to input your hip measurements divided by four plus one inch seam allowance. If you notice, I only added ease to the waist line. Then after that, you connect it together. At the M line, you're going to come up by 2 inches at the side seam and then you're going to use the curved part of your ruler to blend it towards the center. This is just to give it a beautiful shape at the M. So the next thing now is to cut it out. So first, like I said earlier, you cut it on the back neckline first. So when you're dark cutting, you're going to take the inner layer and then you consider that as the back. Then you're going to reshape the, the other one. That's going to be your front. So just reshape the neckline.
so this is how it looks so you can take the front out of the way then you bring back the back this is the back so the next thing you want to do now is to slit the center of the back like uh, five inches downward so that uh, the the top will be able to fit into your head so we are going to be creating a button loop at the back so just slit it by five inches like this all right so the next thing you want to do now is to place another fabric on fold and then you're going to cut facing for the top if you like you can use bias to finish the neckline and the ham hoop i'm going to be using facing last week I've explained to you how you can cut facing for a sleeve a sleeveless dress so the same uh, technique is applicable here as well so just cut out your facing so from the size seam your uh, your facing is going to be two inches all right so i'm done cutting out the facing the next thing now is to slit the center back of the facing just the way you slitted the just the way you slitted the main body all right so you keep the back aside then you also cut facing for the front as well so you can watch last week tutorial to get more in-depth knowledge about the little little adjustments i'm making on the facing So the next thing I'm going to be doing now is to cut out the strip of fabric that I'm going to be using to create the ruffles, you know, that big uh, flower in front of the top. So I'm just stacking my fabric on top of each other so that I can cut it at once. This is the way I cut my organza anytime I'm cutting it into a strip or if it's a uh, net, this is the same way I'm going to cut it as well. This way it makes it so very easy for you and then it will be very straight. So just tack it and then you iron it down on a low heat. Don't put uh, too much uh, heat because it's it can melt under the iron. So the next thing you want to do is just to first rule uh, like one inch so that you can have a very straight edge if i'm working with net this is the same way I, I used to do it so the next thing is to measure seven seven inches so the width of the strip is going to be seven seven inches then it's going to be a very long length so i just measure the seven seven inches depends on the inches you want like for this petal like this flower the seven inches is just perfect because you're going to fold this into two that will give you three and a half even if you're cutting it do it the same way if you're cutting 100 years of net the same method it's so easy and fast and then the whole thing will just be straight and fine you know i'm giving you tips because this is what i do almost in fact i do it every day this is my source of income i sew so that's why you see my video are full with so many uh, techniques and easiest way to do things so after cutting it out this is how it looks So what you're going to be doing is just to join them together and then after that you can see this is how it looks so you just fold it into two and after folding it into two you have three and a half inches.
Next thing I'm going to be doing next is to cut the base for the flower. So first I'll fold my fabric into two, then I'll fold it downward into four, then I'll also say fold it downward into eight. So this fabric here is folded into eight such that after cutting it out, I'm going to have two circles. Just like the way you used to fold your peplum. Exactly. That's the way I folded the material here. As you can see here, the flower is divided into two parts. We have the base and then we have the ruffles. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to do is to use my nipple to nipple distance to bring out the circle. So my nipple to nipple distance is 8 inches. I'm going to divide that into two and that will give me four inches then i'll have the same allowance of half an inch to it that will be four and a half so i'm going to rotate the four and a half just the way i'm showing you here so that i can cut it out and have two circles for the base so after cutting it out we have two circles just like this Here is the summary for the total cutout. We have the strip for the ruffles on the flower. We also have the base of the flower. We have the front bodies with the facing. We also have the back bodies with the facing. Alright, so I'm going to be showing you how to sew it now. So first I'm going to be working with the strip that I cut that I'm going to use to form the ruffles. So this is the width of the strip. We have 7 inches. So I'm going to fold it into two this way and that will become three and a half inches. So I'm going to sew close the mouth of the strip this way. So when you are done sewing it together, you are going to fold them out of the opening like this. So just push it in like half inch, then you tortition it so that you can close the edge this way. You will do this for both the beginning of the ruffle and at the end of the ruffle. So what you are going to do is to start pleating it. If you like, you can pleat directly on the base, but that's we, that will be a whole lot of work. So the first step is just to pleat it this way, all the way to the end. So make it very close to each other so that you can have a very full flower. So you can continue pleating it until you exhaust the whole strip. As you can see, it's a very long strip. So I also close the mouth of the ruffle at the end of it like this, just the way I did it for the beginning of the ruffle. So the next thing now is to work with the base of the ruffle. So this is it. So we have two circles, so just place them on top of each other and then you are going to sew it all around. When you are done sewing it, you are going to notch it all around. Then after that, just open it up this way, like separating the circles like this, then you just make a small cut on one side just a tiny little cut so that you can be able to bring the fabric to the right side from that opening So after bringing it to the right side, you iron it flat. So the next thing you want to do now is to measure half inch all around the circle. Just continue to measure half inch. 
all around like this till you get to the middle of the circle or you can do it by sides depends on how you can work with it all right so when that is done you the next thing is just to place the ruffle that you created earlier on top of the half inch and then you continue to stitch it on it till you get to the middle of the circle so this way it will be very easy for you because you already make the pleat so you can place the ruffle anyhow you want it it's easy to work with this way than pleating it directly on the circle since it's already pleated just sew it all around it easy and fast And that's it our flower is ready the flower is such a beautiful thing to behold it's so beautiful so fluffy <laughs> it looks just like ice cream <laughs> all right so this is it it's ready and yeah and this is how it looks at the back you can see this is how it looks at the back So the next thing I'm going to do next is to cut out a strip of fabric that I'm going to use to create the button loop at the back of the top. So the width of the strip is one and a half inch. I didn't measure the length but it's just a small strip that I'm going to use to create the loop for the button at the back. So I'm just going to fold it this way to make it into a tiny little rope. So I'm going to fold it this way, like crossing it like this, so that I can use it to create the loop. Please kindly subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you can be notified anytime I upload a new tutorial. Thanks. So I'll take the body and I'm starting with the back. So I'm going to place the loop I created earlier half inch downward from the neck and I'll place it and stitch on it. On the right side of the back. So after doing that, I'll keep it aside and then I'll take the facing for the back. This is the facing for the back. So I'll fold it once at the M like this so that I can conceal the raw edge. After that, I'll place the right side of the facing on top of the right side of the back. Then I'll sew all around the neckline and then the arm hole. Then after that, you notch all around the neckline and all around the arm hole. So you also take the front and then you are going to finish the arm o and the neckline with the facing. Don't forget to first knitting the edge of the facing and then you sew it all around the neckline and the arm o of the front this way. Then after that you also notch. So don't forget to trim the seam allowance to like quarter inch on the arm o and also 
at the neckline. So after that, I ironed it. Then I'm working with the front. I placed my tape at the shoulder. I measured down my nipple point. My nipple point is 10.5. So I measured 10.5 and then I placed the flower on top of it at the center of the top like this. You can position your flower anyhow you want it, but I think it's better this way. Then I pinned it. Then after that, I flip the ruffle at the edge like this so that I can assess the half inch that we left at the beginning of the ruffle like this. Then I will pin it all around on the top so that I can use that half inch to stitch the petal, uh, the flower to the front bodies. You can use this flower to beautify any part of your dress. You can use it for your top. You can use it for your skirt. You can even use it to form a sleeve. It mustn't be like placing it on a top alone. Just be creative with it. Now that you know how to make this beautiful rose, you can place it anywhere on your dress. Alright, so now what you're going to do next is to join both the front and the back of the top together. Don't forget to take off your pins. After attaching the flower to the top, this is how it looks on the front part and also at the wrong side. So I will aim the bottom part of the top of both the front and the back. And I also join both front and back together on the shoulder, after which I'm going to close the sides because of the way the fabric is I'm going to be closing the side using a fencing method so I'll place the wrong side of the both the front and the back of the top together and I'll close the side using half inch seam allowance I'm actually sewing on the right side of the top now as you can see this is the right side of the top I'll close it that way Then after that, I'm going to trim the seam allowance to quarter inch. Then after that, I will turn the fabric to the wrong side. So I will now close it the normal way. I will now close with half inch seam allowance. If you remember, I added one inch for my seam allowance. And that's it. Our top is ready. And here is our beautiful top. <laughs> and I paired this with the pinafore skirt that I made some time ago. What I did was just to tuck the upper part of the pinafore in and I zipped it. And it's just become a beautiful skirt. And also gave it to my uh, baby girl for her birthday and she paired it with a palazzo pant and that is it. Let me know in the comment section who rock the top best between me and my baby girl. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in my next tutorial. Bye.